previously on Working Man Games. My god, this game is so boring. It's putting me to sleep, man. There's no sound effects, nothing. It's just a bunch of JPEGs. It's a bunch of... Oh, what? Oh, what the shit? Oh, oh. Oh, we've been trying to reach you regarding your car's extended warranty. The <laughs> joke's on you, I have a truck. So there's another X-Files game, and it seems like this one's a little bit more well-known than the FMV game is. The one thing, whether you played it or not, that everybody seems to agree on is that it's a Resident Evil clone. But is it a good Resident Evil clone? Till no, till the no, 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 yeah, to the no. Alright, look guys, I don't want to be that reviewer that steadily shits on every single game he reviews, but this game really did a complete 180 bullshit thing to me. I really thought this was going to be an interesting game to talk about, but it just ended up being just really repetitive and boring to the point to where it's hard to even say anything about it. To the point where I've been putting off this review because I don't want to do it. In fact, after I get through with this review, I'm going to play Candy Crush so I'll be less bored. But with all that said, let's play x Files Resistor Serve on the PlayStation 2. 16-year-old sisters Mandy and Caitlin Winslow. The pair disappeared from their stepfather's Red Falls trailer home two weeks ago. Unlike the FMV game, you actually do get to play as Mulder and Scully, so that's a big plus. And their models look about as close to them as PS2 is able to do. In this game, they're investigating a case where a town is having problems with murders caused by a man who's already dead. The town has placed the blame on two girls who practice witchcraft. Sounds like as good of an excuse as any to have zombos roaming the streets of, a uh, trash panda town. You can't tell me teenage girls with a high school interest in the occult have somehow managed to raise the dead. Hey, I've seen them do it on Buffy. Right about the time they get into town, they find a cop that's been shot, and Mulder enters a cafe to try to find a landline phone to call from. Thus begins the game. And yep, it looks like Resident Evil, all right. But you know what it doesn't have? Tank controls! There are no tank controls! Praise Jeebus, can I get an amen? You move the stick, you move that direction. Look at that burger, that's a good looking burger. So you already have a flashlight, and you already have a gun, and you can equip both at the same time. But you can only run if you have one or the other equipped, not both. Not a big deal because honestly, there's not many instances where you'll need the flashlight. It's lit up enough already. There's a man hurt outside. I need a phone. Leave him alone, Motor. He's trying to cook burgers, damn it. That's me when that damn Waffle House jukebox starts playing that Waffle House music. Special heating. We can only have the Waffle House. So we shoot down our first Zomboni. Hey, I wonder how the fry cook's doing. I'm guessing you didn't see anything either. They fried us on a damn griddle! Guys, you see that right there? That in the background? That's an item. I don't know that yet. Remember that. Obtained Roscoe's keys. Guys, you remember my cat Roscoe? He lives with my parents now. I wonder how he is. <laughs> Wait, what? No, no! No, Roscoe! Roscoe, no! Don't make me do this, Roscoe! Roscoe, why do we hurt the ones we love? You know how Resident Evil has that thing where you have a limited amount of ammo and once you use it up, that's it? Well, X-Files took that idea and ran like a bat out of hell with it. A full magazine is 15 rounds. If you do your part, it takes four shots to kill a zombie. So you're one bullet shy of a full mag taking down four zombies, which is kind of aggravating. They should have went ahead and made the mag 16 rounds, even though I realize the pistol this is based off of, the SIG 226, has a 15 round magazine in real life. But nobody playing this game is gonna give a fuck. Realism is not always a good thing. Stalker anomaly. Now having a limited amount of ammo wouldn't be a big thing if there was a limited amount of enemies, but there are enemies in this game that respawn. So it is highly important you don't go guns a-blazing and shoot every fucking zombie you see, because there's plenty of them. So what do you do if you do run out of ammo? There's other weapons, right? Um, there's a Molotov cocktail you can make, but you need a gas can, a beer bottle, a piece of cloth, and a lighter to make it. Now, the gas can is in the car at the gas station you fight Roscoe at. The beer bottles are all over the map, but you know where that piece of cloth is? That thing I walked right past at the start of the game. So if I want to make Molotovs, I gotta go all the way back to the start of the game to go get them. Fuck! 
Now we go in the post office and there's a zombie with an AK-47, which can only mean a post office worker had an AK to begin with. God bless America. And you know what else? You can get the AK. I don't know, just the visual image of Fox Mulder with an AK-47 just makes me think I'm playing a San Andreas mod. So what do you do when you completely run out of ammo and Molotovs? Well, there is one more attack. There's a punch and a kick and they do the same amount of damage. How much damage, you ask? Well, uh, this is how long it takes to kill one zombie with the melee. <laughs> Now imagine having to do that to one zombie while you've got four other zombies trying to gangbang you. It's easy for me to picture because that exact thing happens during the game. There's this room where a hundred fucking zombies come out of nowhere. You have to keep Scully from getting hit. And unless you didn't kill a single fucking zombie before you got here, you will run out of ammo. So I end up spamming the punch and kick, hoping to God that the cutscene begins before she gets killed. Needless to say, Scully gets killed a lot. What's bad is after the cutscene, the zombies are still there. I've gotten to the cutscene before and then Scully died after. Ain't that some cum on your pizza? This scene right here pretty much sums up how jank this game is. <laughs> It's like if it's not the auto-aim fucking up, it's the awkward controls, or it's the hitboxes of the enemies getting you in a corner and getting you stuck. I wish I had some zombie swimsuit women to eat my brains out. Another weird thing, I never once found a box of ammo for this AK. It's like once I ran out of ammo, that was it. You want to hear the weird part? I think the best times in this game is the times when nothing actually happens. When it's just the creepy atmospheric music and you're having to use the flashlight to move around and there's all this wonderful lighting effects going on and, you know it gives you that sense of dread and like oh god something bad's about to happen isn't it you know that feeling the feeling that i like to call the silent hill effect where nothing's actually happening the atmosphere is freaking you out that's really when this game is good when you're exploring scary spaces it's the combat that kind of ruins it they tried to do a resident evil thing and they made it way too hard they give you barely any ammo and hundreds of enemies some that respawn like these fucking fire zombies they respawn i fucking hate these sons of bitches and there's some enemies where the auto aim barely works like these damn zombie dogs i have actually run my ammo out trying to kill these dogs if the auto aim worked half the time i probably wouldn't have the problem of running out of ammo but alas poor yorick it doesn't and you think Scully would be some help? Cause you know, she has a gun? Like she might do a Resident Evil Zero thing and shoot for you? Well, she kinda will do that. I didn't find out until like near the end of the fucking game. If you have your gun out and aim at an enemy, she'll shoot at it. Oh wow, the light can't keep up with the flashlight. Maybe it's a ghost. The ghost light! <laughs> I know most of this footage of me playing the game is just me kicking zombies to death, but man, that's how it is in this bitch of a game. You know how they could have fixed this? They could have given you a melee weapon, like a baseball bat or a crowbar or something. But no, there's nothing like that in this game. I need a fucking aspirin. Look at this shit, two zombie dogs and a fire zombie. And me with just a handgun with barely any ammo. Now, you see some shotgun shells in my inventory, right? So there must be a shotgun gun in the game. Oh ho ho! Oh ho ho! Ho 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 ho! Ho ho ho! Woo! You wanna hear about the shotgun? You wanna know how you obtain this fucking shotgun? Well sit down boys, cause you're gonna have to beat the most broken piece of shit boss in video game history. I mean it, this level boss can use a cheese grater as a fleshlight. You know where I think all that time and development on getting the auto aim just right went into? I think they put it in this boss instead of you. Every time he gets close to you, he raises his shotgun up and shoots you. And this guy is so damn accurate, he could shoot warts off a of gnat's ass. Those Molotov cocktails do pretty good damage to him, but it takes so fucking long to set one up. He'll already have three shells in your chest by the time you get it ready. And what the fuck is this shit? A penis laser? 
Oh, fuck that shit! You shot me through the wall! This boss fight just pisses me off to no end. You know what else pisses me off? You see this on the ground? A baseball bat? How come you can't pick that shit up? It ain't enough you can't have a melee weapon. The game has to fucking tease you with some that's decoration in the background! How about all that fucking ammo in the shelf right there? Can I have some of that? Can I have some of those hunting rifles? Hell! Wait a minute, I got his health all the way down. Why isn't he dead? Well, there's a key item you get in a cutscene. It's an ice pick. You know, a melee weapon. Kind of like I was asking for. You stick it in the back of the boss's neck when his health is gone. Then it kills him. And the ice pick breaks. Look at the vein on that guy's forehead. He's gonna blow. Fuck this goddamn piece of shit, boss. I hope whoever programmed it is somebody's bitch in a crack house. Oh, my fuck. Fucking God. I need a moment, guys. I'm gonna go punch a knife so I'll feel better. Working Man Games will be right back after Stuart punches a knife. And we're back. How did that knife punch feel, Stu? Ow! But I tell you what, all that shit is worth it because you get the shotgun. And let me tell you something. The shotgun is good. The gun is good. The gun is good. The gun is good. I tell you what's not good. This mine shaft you have to go through with night vision goggles. Scully keeps getting lost. Uh, Scully, do you not realize there's four or five zombies crowded around you like that meme of the lady on the couch? Whoa, what the fuck? Go back, go back, go back! Holy shit, dude! Scully's skull is horrifying! I'm gonna sneak this into the thumbnail. Now, are you seeing what I'm talking about, about how they throw a bajillion enemies at you when you've got limited ammo? I don't know, you're thinking, well, just run past them. No, because Scully stops. And then the zombies gang up on her, so I have to kill them and waste my ammo. Hey, the plot! We haven't talked about the plot in a while. How's that going? Here. Prior Lake is the hot zone, and Frank Hawthorne was patient zero. His accidental death released whatever it was that was incubating inside him. Are you saying they manufactured the virus here? At a facility you believe is dedicated to parapsychology? For what purpose? I don't know. So, get this. This small city has a secret laboratory with a scientist that made a virus that turned people into zombies. They're not even hiding it anymore. It's just like, yeah, we know. It's so weird, though. X-Files is an alien show, not a zombie show. When are we going to see the aliens? When we played the FMV X-Files game, there was a type of alien that was a parasite that controlled people. Well, guess what? The shotgun boss was an alien. That's why he could only be killed with that ice pick. Well, one of those aliens is still in its black oil state, and if it touches you, you turn into the alien owl. Alien possession. That's a game over. Well, what the fuck was that? Zombies are like glitching out in the background. And then there's this asshole, which I can't really get good video footage of because of these fucking zombies. Uh, oh. Ganging up on Scully, plus I keep having to spam the menu to use healing items. What happens is you try to get close to him and you try to shoot him and then he'll stun you. It's no use! Man, the X-Files transition to 3D was rocky to say the least. You know how I finally killed him? By getting in a corner and just shooting him from far off where he can't reach me. After all the trouble I had trying to kill him, that's insultingly easy. And according to the IGN walkthrough I read, that's really the only way to kill him. To cheese it. Congratulations, game. You have the worst bosses in video game history. I award you the hot mess ribbon. Let's catch up with the plot. Before the boss fight, Mulder finds an alien artifact. Finally, some damn aliens. But before they can get it, they're rushed into a helicopter and the entire town is wiped out with a bomb. Now, if this were Resident Evil, this is where it would end. But this is the X-Files, and the X-Files don't play that shit. This is only the first chapter of this entire game. <sighs> well, let's keep going. So what Mulder found out is that alien artifact he found was the thing that was making the zombies. An artifact emitting a force strong enough to regenerate life in a three mile radius surrounding Briar Lake. There's one cutscene here that makes me laugh that looks so lazily put together. I hope you'll see what I'm talking about. Mulder, I still don't know why you want to hide the encrypted disc I found at Briar Lake from Skinner. Getting those bodies to Quantico, he clearly wants to help us. Here, Mulder, here's some exposition while we A pose and not look at each other while we're talking. Then there's a sequence where Mulder's having a nightmare and he's in the FBI office 
I can't figure out what door I'm supposed to go through. I try every single door in the office and none of them open, not even the one I just came out of. Even my walkthrough didn't come through for me. You want to know where this door was I was supposed to go through? When you go down this little hallway right here, you could just barely see it on the side of the screen. And the camera only changes to it after you've done walked right up to it. I don't know if that was me being stupid of the game. I really don't know there. So in this nightmare Molder's having, he kills his boss. I could make a joke about his boss being a boss, like a game boss, but oh, fuck it. He wakes up in his apartment, but he's still dreaming. Scully and his friends are there, and Scully tries to poison Mulder with a syringe. Now, you would think you're supposed to shoot Scully, but you're actually supposed to just run away. Then you run around a maze full of zombonies and come out in this funky church, which looks like it's from a completely different game, like Devil May Cry Me a fucking river. Then you get attacked by these cultists, I guess? And you can't kill them. You're just supposed to die on this part. One of Mulder's friends snaps him out of the night, Nightmare. And the first thought that goes through Mulder's head as soon as he pops out of a terrible nightmare, let's go on a plane to Russia. And <laughs> that's all of chapter two. Now Mulder's in Russia and the first damn thing that happens is a bunch of crazy people want to chop his arm off. Oh, no, 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 no. The smallpox scar is some kind of identification tag. You don't have to do this. The move in the arm does nothing. Suka, blat! Now we're in a gulag. Oh shit, down Balto, down. So yeah, long story short, I ran through this Russian military base 90% of the time with no gun whatsoever. No way to defend myself. Well, except for, yeah. When in doubt, kick the zombies in the nads. That'll learn them. And these zombies are tougher, so it actually takes longer to kick them to death. This is gonna be a long game. Time to teach these zombies the way of the exploding kick! I did finally find a shotgun though, and I was forever grateful. Well, that wasn't much of a boss. That was more of an employee. So now the plot has gone completely off the rails. The smoking man, who, if you don't know, is the villain of X-Files, is using Mulder to help him find a crashed spaceship because he caught a virus while in not Raccoon City, and now he's able to tell where the ship is. And while all that's going on, there's this other guy who's got, like, alien powers trying to kill Mulder. I, I don't know. My brain kind of checked out after kicking so many zombies in the balls. So now we're at what's almost the final stretch of the game, and I am completely out of ammo. And it's right about this time that Scully finally decides to use her gun. And this reporter thinks it's about f***ing time. So like I said, I guess Scully is triggered every time you aim your gun. You don't even have to have any ammo. If I'd have known this, I probably would have used her to save lots of ammo. You want to hear something awful though? Apparently at that Russian military base, there was a handgun I could have picked up. I just never saw it. So it's not the game's fault I'm running around with handgun ammo and no handgun, it's me. But I ended up dying later on in the game and when I loaded my save again, it just gave me the handgun. So then I went around in this big, dark, freaky church thing. I get ambushed by zombies with AK-47s, and I died several times because all I got's a handgun. Shooting behind cover kinda helped. So now I've got an AK and tons of ammo. Man, they must be setting me up for something. It's setting me up to fight the weird, creepy guy. This isn't real. You're just a man. You believe that you can defeat me. Somewhere in your mind, you think there is an answer. You believe that you can find- The answer. The tool of your destruction. This guy isn't really that hard. Just don't get close to him or he'll stun you. Or make you dance, I guess. He sure does take a lot of hits, though. I sure did need that ammo. Oh, oh shit, we're in the spaceship. We're with the Alamows. Are we gonna get to see David Duchovny get probed in the ass? He probably got stuff stuck up his ass in that other show he did. I swear, every time they showed commercials for this show, he was fucking a different woman. Motor and Scully fucked on the show. I bet that sex was weird. Scully, my little green man's gonna land on your planet. <laughs> I come in peace! <laughs> 
The part of the game where I finally gave up and stopped playing was the boss rush. You have to beat this boss like four or five times. I don't know, I guess the devs just got lazy and just copy pasted the boss over and over again. The only difference is now there's respawning zombies that keep trying to kill you. And I must have died over and over and over trying to beat this thing. And as far as I know, there's no checkpoint or save point. If you die, you have to start the boss rush all over again. And halfway through the supermarket area, I ran out of ammo completely. And I felt this was as good a time as any to shut the game off. Now guys, I never like to be the contrarian. I hate to be that one guy that's got the different opinion from everybody else because then it makes me look like an asshole. But in this case, everybody seems to really like this game. Well, I don't. I think it's a pile of crap. It's not a good Resident Evil clone. The environments are boring. The story is all over the place. The combat is terrible. They don't give you enough ammo, and what they do give you is hidden by camera angles. And you know what's crazy? I only showed you half of the game. This is only part of the game. You can play as Scully and get completely different maps and levels. They pulled that Resident Evil 2 thing where you can play as two different characters. So there's a whole side of this game I haven't even played yet. But you know what? I don't need to. I'm good. And you know what? That's the last X-Files game. So that means I can start on something else. Now let's move on to something else, y'all. Let me check my list. What are we going to do next? Let's see. Hey, the new Pokemon's out. How about we do a Pokemon game? Yeah, let's do Pokemon. Hell yeah. Oh man, I still remember getting Pokemon in red as a kid. Oh, it was so good. I bet it's still good. You know what, let's find out. Next review, we're playing Pokemon Red and Blue. Hey, if you want early access and a Discord server that's got me in it, think about donating $5 to the Patreon, like all these wonderful people did. Some of these did it for $1 to get their name on the board. Just one damn dollar gets you up here. You'll also be feeding my ass and paying my bills. You know those funds where you donate an X amount of money and then they send you a picture of a child you're supporting? Well, I'm a man-child, so that's close enough. And if you don't want to be stuck to a subscription service, you can always do coffee. That's K-O-F-I coffee. I really appreciate it, man. You know, my tires are completely bald, and and my refrigerator quit running. In fact, that's one of my Patreon goals. Get me a new refrigerator. Anyway, you guys have a good day. As for me, I gotta do Thanksgiving. Man, I hate Thanksgiving. My family's food all tastes like their house smells. I think I mentioned that before. And on top of all that mess, why do I keep getting other people's mail in my mailbox? Can my mailman not read numbers? I swear, the next time I go outside and someone else's package is in my damn mailbox, I'm gonna open that shit up and see what they have. It's our fault we're relying on such an unreliable postal surface. I think that's what UPS probably stands for unreliable postal service. You know, I was telling my daddy. I'm